Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. And I can choose what I want to say. Ha! Here we are. We're all over the road. We're in a weird place. Uh, this is a felty, furry greenery here. We got monitors. Yeah, I don't like the monitor. I can see myself. Ooh, although yeah. better to see it us than Chuck. But hey, what can you do? We're in a we're in the we might be drunk offshoot. I've been drinking Gotham, right? Is Gotham this Gotham Studios? Studios. Is there? There's it. like another Gotham Studio. Everything's called Gotham. There's a comedy club. There's a Gotham City with Batman. There's oh, a few Gothams. I know what happened. I did Luke Monis's started a new podcast. And I got bumped up to the first guest. Isn't that Ooh, nice? When they big. got a bunch canned. Very flattering. Then you do your episode and they go, we're releasing this first. Cans. That's a nice feeling. Cannes Film Festival. Yes, con. But I think he typoed uh, me. He was like, hey, it'll be at the, at the uh, where are we? Gotham Studios. Yeah. And I was like, great, Midtown, suck my dick. Easy and then peasy. He sends the address and it's like, you know, Staten Island. Yep. And I was like, oh, that's not the right studio. He told me the wrong studio. Yeah, do you have, I mean, I live in Manhattan currently, so I get the, uh, will you do my podcast? And I always go, all right, I'll do it. It's some some homeless guy. And uh, he goes, all right, here it is. And he sends it to me, and I'm like, oh, thank God it's not Brooklyn. Always thank God it's not Brooklyn. Well, that's because you're dumb, and you confirmed before you saw the address. That's true. That's no good. I no go, good. where, the day, the time, your parents' address, I need your parents' phone number just in case something goes wrong. Yeah. And then if it's anywhere outside of Astoria, I say, thank you, no thank you. <laughs> what are they, four pods in Astoria? Well, there's big ones. Stavros. Okay. Shane's used to be there, but that's he moved. That's true. That's two and a half. And, uh, and uh, Mindful Metal Jacket sometimes. Hey, the big three. Yep, the big but, ones. Well, this is how funny. Uh, we think we're disorganized. You know, we got a, a medley here, or a bouquet. Um, uh, bouquet Louis, broiler. <laughs> Luis Gomez texted me and Sam, and he goes, hey, podcast uh, skanks tomorrow, you in? Sam was like, yeah, I'm in. Then Sam has a side text me, he goes, where is it? And I go, oh, it's at the stand. He didn't even know that. And then he goes, what time? And I go, 8.30. So I'm telling him the time. He didn't even tell us the time or the day or the location. And why doesn't Sam text the guy whose show it is? I think he's a little, you know, he's off. He's doing stuff. He's raising kids. He's fist fighting neighbors. Oh, he didn't want to bother Lewis. I guess so. Now, do you have, are those stripes over there? You, you can't see them on camera. Are they throwing you off because it's a wonky? I don't look at them. I got your knee. I don't look at them. I look at you. And then over there, I have a side wonk. There's definitely a wonk. It doesn't read. It's 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 vibrating. It's a side wonk vibrate. Exactly. So yes. SWV. Hey, isn't that that group? SWV? Yeah. Who? That was a group. SWV. This is why we need Chuck. It's BMW. Single white V male. Ah. Salty Single wet white. vagina. Yeah. <laughs> Sexy wigger virgin. <laughs> Woo, enough about Giannis, but um, <laughs> um, I, I think that was a group, SWV. I think they oh. sang, never gonna get it, never gonna get it, never oh, get it. I didn't know they had a, uh, an Ooh, abbreviation. Bah, bah. I think so. Yeah, all right. There's TLC. And SUV. Yeah, yeah. And then there's uh, IUD. CSI. IED. Miami. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> SVU. Very good show. Uh, anyway, so we're in this wonky, wacky studio. We got, we're at Wrigley Field here, and um, <laughs> it feels like the U.S. Open or something. Oh yeah, the table's a little crooked. No. Oh yeah, it's drunk. Uh, Chuck is dead. We fucked up. I fucked up. I chucked up. He'll be back. Yeah, sorry, but he'll be back. He's coming. He's around. Two two Chuckless episodes, not on purpose. He was on the cruise, and then uh, I don't know what happened today. You oh, had a snafu. I had a snap. Well, what happened was I was driving back. I stayed in Boston all weekend to watch football and hang out. And then driving back, drive with the baby is a different situation because he shits. You have to pull over. You got to feed him. So it's like an hour. 
And I'm all about making good time. Right. And you can't make good time with a baby. And by the time you get back, you woke up at six. And so we shifted to today. Well, that's what's we fun are. about you having a baby because you're all about time. You're all about management. You're all about a plan. And a baby puts a pinky right in your bee hole with a plan, with a, with anything. And you got to deal with that now. I know. It's rough. And uh, I'm a very on timey guy. And I like to be, uh, what's the word for on time? Be, be aggressive. No. Uh, punctual. Punctual. I like being punctual, and uh, what are you going to do? So, And then now when I go out and do things, I left my wife you know, sitting there barefoot in the kitchen. So i got to yes. get back, and she's got to spot the whole thing. Oh, so you got to get back so she can go do the spot. i got to alleviate her so she can go do some comedy. Got it. Oh, man, that is tough. Hold on. I had a thing, and I lost it. You got the kid. Kid. Be aggressive. Chuck. New oh, studio. I lost it. Damn it. People are gonna be furious about the these arms here. Oh, you don't like it, huh? You like I, I don't it. mind. I'm saying they're gonna be furious. Yeah. We never had this before. It's a little uh, intrusive. I guess we had that at the uh, the original studio at Labs. Did Labs have these? Yeah, I think they did. Oh yeah, we had cans too. Cans. They're fun to lean on, at least. I don't know. Yeah, I like the lean. But uh, wait, so you got the baby, and yeah, it's throwing off the whole rhythm. It's all out of rhythm, circadian rhythm. Oh, I got it back. Hit me with it, please. So Salacuse has a child, and we oh, were right. hanging out the other night or the other day, and he's like, oh, I got to go pick up my kid from school. And I was like, oh, weird. All right, I'll go with you. I've, I don't know this world, and I'm not allowed at the school, but uh, I go by there. They don't recognize me, and it's just thousands of kids running around and parents going, Hey, I'm here. And then the kid runs up, they hug, and you leave with it. And then there's a, a security guy at the end going, all right, you look enough like him. Right. And then you get to leave, which very uh, loose system, very lax. Yes. And then he takes his kid to a playground where all the other school kids are playing, and he just goes, run free. And I was, I was fascinated. It's a weird world, and it's crazy because I, I went to my nephew's basketball game. He's seven. By the yeah. way, one of the teams just torched the other team. Uh, it's weird when you watch sports when people are seven because there's no tryouts. Everyone's on the team. Right. And some kids, they're just full retard. They throw it up. It goes backwards. Yeah. And you can tell who has an older brother because they're just draining shots. Wow. They can dribble. They're going underneath. And it's wacky, and you know you're next to the dad. You got to figure out who you're next to. Yes, yes. Because you you got to be like, please show me a sign, because you don't want to be like, what's up with uh, Rain Man out there? Yeah. And then he's like, that's my son, you piece of shit. <laughs> but that's what's awkward. You got to just hope your kid isn't uh, special needs, because then it's what's the point of living? Completely, or hope he's black. Maybe he'll make a point. But also, Salacuse, uh, I was like, I'm freaking out. There's too many kids running around. One kid hits a kid. They're fighting. They're uh they're making out over here. I'm like, oh, this is too much stimulus. I can't do it. And he goes, well, my kid's eight. I've had eight years of learning to be patient. Mm. And I remember being like, oh yeah, that's a good point. You had to like condition yourself over time to get yelled at, to change dirty diapers, get pissed on, that whole thing. And you're in the middle of it. But I think that was cute. You hear that? No. Oh, it was a squeaky fart. It was uh, nice. I but I think it. Salacuse, though, he's a modest guy. He's humble. He's gay. He's been like that, don't you think? Mm, well, I don't know. I didn't know him before a kid. But I bet, I bet he. It's not like he was like a high strung. Where's my kid? That's ah! true. That's and true. now he's cool as a cucumber. Right. That's who he is. It's not like he had a seven year old and all of a sudden he likes confronting homeless people. Which <laughs> I'm about to have him on Mindful Metal Jacket because I want to get to the bottom of that guy. He's a Budinsky, we call him. Right. Because he likes to get in there. He'll see a guy with a with a safe and a, and a fucking what do you call that thing with the uh, the ears? The doctor. Drill? No, the stethoscope? Uh, yes, he's got the stethoscope up to it, the ear thing in, and he's got a flamethrower and he's burning a hole in a safe. And Sal accused will go up and go, Excuse me, that's illegal. <laughs> and I'm like, What are you doing? Let the guy rob the safe. He's like a Karen. He's a Karen. I'm a Karen. I love Karens. If Karen is bad, I don't want to be good. Karen is or Sharon. Whatever, whatever it is. I'm all Karen all the time. Well, you do need a kid because sometimes people are being uh, unruly. Sometimes people are being uh, uh, illegal. This whole idea of Karen bad. I mean, like, oh, they called the cops. Where you're like, wow, they were, you were beating up uh, my son out in my front yard. Well, we've gone off the deep end with the, uh, the smash and grab. That's what the kids are calling it. Uh -huh. That's where you fuck a girl and grab her tit. But it's it's like, hey, well, CVS can afford it. You're like, I know, but that's not 
how the society works. We're living in a society, Jerry. How about I just hung out with Big Al David, and he was in San Francisco, and uh, they had a car. They rented a car. They were driving around San Fran. They wanted to go check out the waterfront. They found parking like a half mile away, and they were like, ah, there's all these smashing grass. Everyone's crashing the windows, whatever. There's glass everywhere. So they asked a security guy. They go, what's the, what's the best way? Tell us, how serious is it? We want to go to the water. We're going to go down there for an hour. Uh, is our car in danger? The guy goes, I'll tell you how you do it. Three of you go, two stay with the car, and geez, then you switch. Jesus. What and is he's Mad like, Max? He's like, that's the best way to do it. And they said they literally watched a guy smash a window like across the street, go through the car, and then walk. Not run. Walk away. Wow. That's San Francisco, which San Fran, I love, and I talked about it recently. I was there. If you have a hotel and no car, you're golden. Right, right. You take a lift, you walk around, whatever, you're fine. But if you have a vehicle with your shit in it, forget about it. That's interesting. Yeah, because I've had a lot of comedians like, it's not that bad. I've been there. I played there. It's fine. You go out to eat. You do whatever. I'm like, but yeah, you don't live there. You yeah. were there for eight hours. Yes. If you don't have a car and you have a room, no sweat. But if you're going to try to park somewhere, you got to like empty the car, roll the windows down, the whole thing. I saw a thing on the news about uh, the, the Toy Story or the Toy Store where Toy, Toy Story is based on. I've been drinking. Wait, Toy Story based on a Toy Store? It's based on a Toy Store. They went into a toy store. They're like, wow, this place is magical. It's kind of like F.A.O. Schwartz, but okay. on the West Coast. Gotcha. Toy Story is based on this toy store. Like the toys come to life, that whole thing. Uh-huh. They got the idea in this toy store. Got it's it. like 89 years old. Everybody's been there. They bring your kids there. It's part of the community. Closed. Ah, Just closed. Because they steal the stuff or because no one buys toys because Amazon? They steal. Ah. They had the, the theft. They closed the first in and out Stop the steal. The original in and out is closed? Not the original. Because of stealing? The, the Oakland. The ah. Oakland episode is, is closed. And uh, they, too much theft. They're stealing the animal style, Jerry. They're taking the buns. <laughs> Well, we got to figure something out. We need some law and order. I guess so. That's what we need, folks. Well, speaking of which, I got a story along the lines of this right. just happened. Bum, I, bum. What's that? Law and order. Ah. Uh, TV show. I was thinking current affair. Uh, <laughs> oh, Remember yeah, that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was alarming. Yeah, a little bit. I kind of like this studio. It's nice, but the, I'm getting the wonks. I told you about the wonks. It's no good. You didn't believe me about the wonks. It's uh, visually impairing. For those who can't see or tell, oh, you can see it in your camera, actually. Oh, yeah. Oh, you can see wonks. it in mine, too, actually. We got a little monitor. There's multiple things happening here. One, we have wonkies. There Two, our producer is out there. Now, I like a producer in the room, yeah. not to interrupt us and tell us what he thinks, but it's nice to have somebody that it feels like you're talking to. Yes. Because otherwise, we're just two psychopaths just yelling out at. 100,000 people that aren't here. Yeah, for an orgy or a porno, I'd want him out there. But it's a podcast. Like, if we were fucking, I'd be like, hey, the guy's outside. I know he's watching, but he's not. I can't see him. Good point. But for this, you want to see the guy. Well, it's an odd thing. I just did a Mindful Metal Jacket. Check out the podcast. I'm trying to make it work. I got a huge guest coming up. Oh, big really? tease. Ooh. And I mean big. Come on. Bigger than you're thinking. Trump. No, smaller. All right, Elon. Smaller than that. Okay. I went too big. But anyways, big guest coming. Big guest. But I just did one with Isabel Hagen, little guest. And I like it, is. It's awkward because we're in here, and then the guy's like, uh, all right, we're going to hit record, and you guys have fun, and then the door closes. It feels like a uh, casting couch. <laughs> it does. It does. I mean, I'm going to put my hand on your knee in a minute. Please don't. All right. Uh, and there's literally a couch with cameras. But anyways, That's so check true. this story out. Where are the cameras? This is. What, did you spill on your face? A little bit. Oh, Holy jeez. Jeez, that was more than I thought. Why is drinking. it beating? What kind of sweatshirt is that? It's very, uh, what's the word? Close knit? What, what's that? A thread count. May I see it? Oh. I don't know if that's seeing. That's nice. But yeah, yeah. Well, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. It's half linen, half denim, half fiber. What is it, <laughs> <laughs> what is it again? Fiber. Something cotton is in there cotton. somewhere. Cotton. Uh, remember that? You see with your eyes, not your hands? That was a big thing. Oh, yeah. Because you go, let me see the toy. Let me see. You yes. see with your eyes, not your hands. That's right. That, and you make a better door than a window. Ooh. Those are huge. And then uh, I'm up here. Oh. If you look at tits. Right, right, the tits. Well, the tits were tough because uh, you, you get a lady with full-on crazy cleavage. Then they'd put glitter on the cleavage in the 90s. Remember mm. that? And a then little. if you look at it, you were like a weirdo. 
Yeah, you got glitter on your tits. What are you What are you doing to me? Put glitter on your forehead. I'll stare at that. Yeah, I think tits. Well, let us stare at the tits. Come on, be cool. You brought them. You want to stare at my dick? Just say the word. I'll pull the thing out. You got it. I don't stare. know. Stare. Uh, give me a minute before I pull it out. At least. Good point. Let me fluff. Uh, all right. So today, so I recorded the podcast, Mindful Mental Jacket. Go check it out. Big guest coming up. We do the episode. I go, hey, let's hit Chipotle. We go over to Chipotle. Now, the studio here is in Midtown. I don't want to give too much away here. It's in Midtown. Yeah, it's in the 30s, 40s. We're in a block from, like us, we're a block from Port Authority. Yeah, Kook Central. A couple blocks from Port Authority. We go to Chipotle. I mean, it is literally the kookiest kook situation I've ever seen. Kook Central Station. And we almost came back here to eat because there was just a guy walking up to everyone all wacky. And uh, he left. We're like, all right, we'll sit down. Then we had a second guy come in, and he just walks up to everyone. Hey, can I have a few bucks? Can I have a few bucks? And it's hard because you're eating, and you're like, I'm sorry, I don't have anything. Then a third guy walks in. He's got, like, uh, he's missing all his front teeth. Crazy, you know, shit in his hair, the whole thing. I feel bad for him. Life is not going great. Sure. And you have empathy, but at the same time, you're in a dining room eating a meal. Yes. Having a nice conversation. He does the thing where he just sits next to him. We're at the long table. Uh, he just yes. sits next to Isabel, dead eye contact with me. Can you help me? And I said, I'll uh, tell you what, I got a Chipotle gift card, four bucks on it. And he doesn't really, I can't understand him. He's like, uh, 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 uh. Yeah, and I'm just painting a picture. Sorry, so I give him the gift card. I'm like, "This four dollars and fifty cents here. That's that's something. That's half a burrito. I mean, five dollars is a nice amount of money. Most people don't give a homeless person five dollars. Maybe a one, maybe change. So I give it to him, and uh, he's like, I, "I need more. Give me more." And then I had my phone on the give uh, me more. I had my phone on the table, so I kind of just grabbed it because you know you never know. Yeah, yeah. And I put it in my bucket. He's like, "Can I have that? Can but, I have that?" Yeah, I was like. My iPhone? You don't even know the code. There's yeah. naked pictures of my son and wife on here. <laughs> uh, that's got to be, give me at least 50 bucks for that. Yeah. So I take the phone. Then he turns his attention to Isabel, and he's like, can I have uh, money? Can I have money? And finally, she takes out a single, gives him a single. Okay, so now okay. he's got 550 That's not nothing. That's solid. For That's uh, six seconds of work. Pretty good. So he goes to the line. He's hitting everyone up in the line. And then, all of a sudden, I just hear, <gasps> what the hell? And I look over, he's got a full bowl, pile of cheese, avocado. He just went to the guy at the register and just whoop, took the bowl. Whoa, someone else's bowl. Someone else's bowl. And I was like, Whoa. I was kind of happy for him. I'm like, that's the move. Yes, yeah, the so Super Bowl. He just made five fifty dollars off of us and got a full $18 bowl. And out the door he goes. And it was kind of funny because the guy whose bowl it was, he was like, what the hell? He was yeah. like blown away and shocked and chagrined, which I understand. But you're also like... Well, they're going to make you another bowl. Yeah, they'll get you another bowl. And you almost think, why wow. doesn't... And I guess it's easy for me to say I'm a liberal, cuck, piece of shit, but you're almost like... And I get why you can't do it every day, but you're like, Chipotle, like, eh, just make them a bowl. I guess so. But then but they would just have a lot... It'd be a soup kitchen. I guess you can't do it. Yeah, I mean, it's like they... That was going to sound horrible, but it's like, don't feed the bears, because the bears just keep coming. Right. The football team. Or the gays, who are fat. But yeah, it, it, it never ends, and then... I don't, I don't know what to do because you want to just hire a guy to just, every time he comes in, you just kick him in the face and he never comes back. Well, this is one of the tricky things. And I don't, I don't want to get too political two episodes in a row, but you're like, what are you supposed to do? Because the guys behind the counter, they just signed up to make yes. $16 an yes. hour to make burritos. They're exactly. not, they don't want to wrestle a, a homeless man. No. And so, and I'm sure that's why, did I tell about the third guy? Yeah, three guys came in in the 12 minutes we were eating there. One took a full burrito. And then when we were leaving, there was another guy in there. And a woman was like, I can help you out. And I don't know. I don't know how you handle it. I don't know what to do. But they, so they made the other guy another burrito. So the only loss is to Chipotle. Yeah. But it was quite a sight to just see a man walk up, take someone's food, and you feel like cucked. I know. Oh, God. That's true. It feels like they own the, the place a little bit. Because yeah. you're scared of them. But then you don't want also want to look like an asshole. So you not only are you worried, hey, this guy will breathe on me and give me AIDS, but also <laughs> I don't want to get caught yelling at the guy and be that guy. So you're stuck between a hobo and a hard dick, and it's a hard way. It's a tough place to be. I mean, that's like a great uh, John Prine song you just did. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know how you handle it other than packing up and fucking moving to another I city. This know. is crazy, and it's hard because you try to be empathetic, you try to be a good guy, a good person, but at the same time, you're like. 
I'm trying to go to a restaurant and eat a meal, and I have three separate people getting in my face, taking my shit, stealing food. Totally. And you're uncomfortable because you're like, I don't know how this person's going to react. And they're, obviously, they're unwell. I know. But imagine being some tourist from Kansas who's in town to see Back to the Future on ice or whatever the hell's at Broadway. And then you go to Chipotle to try to have a quick burrito with your with your cute daughter, and she's six, and she's got a little... You know, lollipop and all that. And then a guy with no teeth is like, eh, I need more. I need more. Give me that lollipop. And she's like, what? And then he takes a burrito. That's a wild thing to see. It's terrifying. And then it just puts a an uncomfortable feel. Like yes. we, we walk out, we're, we're saying goodbye, and you're, but you're kind of like, huh. Ah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I don't know. And then, yeah, it's uh, and, and a lot. I feel like a lot of people who hate it. They live in a gated community, so they're like, how could you treat them like that? Then they go back to their big old house with, with a big fucking arm in front of it that you got to talk to a buzzer to get in. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, all the people that are like, oh, someone will write to me and write, you're a fucking dick face or whatever, but you're like, I, I mean, I'm giving a guy money. I don't know what you want me to do. I gave yeah. him a gift card, but that's the same. Yeah, and these are the same people who wear a mask and be like, whoa, I don't want anybody's germ. This guy has got shit all over his face and fingers, and you're like, well, isn't that unsanitary? That's a great point. Ooh, I have a point. Nice. He should wear a mask with those teeth, by the way. It'd I mean, be I'm nice. Not, Tell I'm him to wear a mask. Stones. Yell at him about the mask thing. Big mask. Hey, hey, folks. Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Factor. It's time to work smarter, not harder. Don't spend hours meal planning, shopping, chopping veggies, cooking, and doing dishes. Come on. Factor is delicious, ready-to-eat meals that are chef-crafted, dietitian approved and sent straight to your door. With over 35 meal options to choose from each week, you'll never get bored. Midday snacks, smoothies, wellness shots, you'll be on your A game all day long. I love Factor. I can't cook. The wife's out of town a lot, <coughs> sleeping with other men. So I love Factor. It's just easy, it's quick, and it tastes good, and it's good for you. They know what they're doing over there. So it hits all the boxes. Get a box to your door. Factor is way less expensive than takeout and takes much less time than waiting at a drive-thru. All you do is heat up the meal for two minutes and you're good to go. No prep, no cook, and no cleanup. Head to factormeals.com slash Tuesdays50, one word, and use Tuesdays50 to get 50% off. Hey, half off. That's code Tuesdays50 at factormeals.com slash Tuesdays50 to get 50% off. Get on it. I'm a fan. Hey, folks. Tuesdays with Stories brought to you by Manscaped. Valentine's Day is the one time of year when your grooming really needs to be on point. Manscaped has everything you need in the Performance Package 5.0. It comes with a bunch of awesome products, and you're going to love them all. For starters, the Lawn Mower 5.0 Ultra is going to be your new best friend. This electronic trimmer has skin-safe technology to help protect from nicks and cuts, and it comes with the brightest LED spotlight yet, so you can shave anywhere. I'm not kidding, folks. I use this every single day, and I know they specialize in ball grooming and all that stuff, but they also, I'm using my eyebrows, my nostrils, my mm. beard. I'm trimming mm. everything every night before bed, and I'm not just saying this. Every night before bed, I'm using that thing in the bathroom. I keep it right on the medicine cabinet. I pull it right out. Easy use. Performance package also comes with the Weed Whacker 2.0 ear and nose hair trimmer. That's the thing I'm using. All of Manscaped's liquid formulations to soothe and tone and their refined cologne for the finishing touch. Right now, you can get 20% off and free shipping with the code TUESDAYS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code TUESDAYS because your grooming upgrade awaits to ready to charm your Valentine's dates. Damn right. Yes. But anyways, that happened, That's and I had great. another crazy thing happen. If you want that, please, unless you want to tell me I some mean, stuff. I mean, I can talk about this thing for another six minutes, but let's go to the next thing. Well, we got to, because I want to lead up to, you got some crazy shit. So let me just knock these tits off the uh, the bra. But again, the beacon is, is is like, everything went great. It was awesome. So it's not not really a banger. I know, but still, all you right, know, I want to hear right. all about it. I want to hear okay. about the morning, the afternoon, sure. the night, the next day. Sure. It's wild. And then you had the other thing. I don't yes. know how much you can talk about that. Well, I've been drinking, so we'll go nuts. Okay, great, because uh, i got a few things to say about that, God damn it. But um, <laughs> it's the worst day of my life. Sorry. Um, by the way, a guy messaged me today. By the time you're hearing this, six days have passed. The guy's like, did you hear about this? Ah! And I was like, are you kidding? He's like, I'm not kidding, man. 
wow, look at this. I'm and, not kidding. It's hilarious. And uh, I guess he has a job and stuff, and he's not looking. But I was like, yeah, yeah, this is it. I sent him a link to TMZ, NBC News, <laughs> Reddit, YouTube, Twitter. That's satisfying. I'm like, leave me alone. Yeah. Um, but what can you do? He's living a life. So I'm on my way here. It's where you get two stories on a day of recording. That's true. So I'm on my way here. I get on the train, and uh, which I only take during the day because of the kooks and the crazies. And you put your AirPods in, which are noise canceling now. Yeah, I like that. So you have noise canceling plus the podcast on top of the noise cancel. Yes, very very limited audio coming in. Exactly. So I'm listening to a podcast, and at every stop, I kind of tune in to look look around, see who's got on the train, be aware. Head on a swivel. Swivel. So I look, and it all looks hunky dory. And uh, I put my my head down to to read something, and I just hear, "Oh my God!" Whoa! Screaming! Oh my god! And I look, and everybody's scrambling and jumping up. So Uh-oh. I'm I'm missing a, a sense because I got my ears all wacky. Yes, yes. So I see everyone jumping up. So I just jump up because I'm like, it's a shooting, it's a bombing. Uh, my father's gay. I jump up, and the handrails right above me. I go boom! I just oh, hammer my head. I've done that. So now I got chaos plus birds and stars yes. upstairs. Beep, 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 beep. So I'm, I'm walked out, and I'm like, whoa. But at the same time, I'm like, i got to get out of here because of the shooting. Yeah. So I, I look around at what's going on. Are people running on the train or running off the train? It, all of a sudden, you're in, like, high alert. Oh, yeah. Adrenaline's pumping. Fight or flight. So I see people have run to the door, and I look out the window behind me because I'm sitting like this, where this is the exit. Yeah. And someone has fallen, like, their leg in between. There's, like, a little crack there in between the train and track. So they're what? like, what? And the woman's like, ah! Holy and everyone's hell. like, oh my God. And I see people pulling. So I'm wonky and I go, oh shit. And I go, let me go help. Because I see like two women helping her. So I run out of the train to yeah. go check out the situation. And they immediately like pull her up. Uh-huh. And she's like, and her shoes all fucked up in her bag. Whoa. And she's like, oh, oh, oh. And then you just hear like, oh, wow. stand clear of the closing doors. And the doors start closing. I'm off the train now because oh. I went to help. So I got to like stick my arm in and it closes on me. I'm like, ah! Yeah. And then it, it finally opens and I jump to the train, doors close and we just take off. But it felt like such a, a metaphor for life yes. in New York City where you're like, is it a shooting? Am I going to die? I banged my head. Oh, someone fell down the tracks. They're going to die. Oh, they're safe. Oh, I'm missing the train. Yeah, it's all quick. And within literally four seconds, we are back in the train leaving. And then just quiet, back to podcast. Yes, and everyone on the train just witnessed. Everyone was screaming, and it was crazy. And I, I turned to this woman. I'm like, I thought she fell on the tracks. And this woman literally just goes, like, ah. puts her head, like, doesn't even <laughs> want to talk to me. And she was, like, a cute girl. So I feel like she thought I was going to be like, hey. Right. I right. was going to go sit. Like, she was like, I'm not interested. And it's so weird. You're just, we're all just back riding the train. And you wow. just go, well. That's over. Damn, that's crazy. That is a good summation of New York City in about 10 seconds. And no good deed goes unpunished. You try to go help the lady. Now you're off the train. You might lose the train. I almost missed the train, which would have been a better story if I missed the train. But you're like, ah. Yeah, you got the arm in. Again, I've always said that's the difference between men and women. I watch women run down the stairs. The train doors are closing. And they, they, they have a window to put the arm in, but they won't do it. Right. Because they don't want to inconvenience the train, which is very nice, I guess. And men will go, Boop, but the men will put their dick in there just to get something. Yeah, but don't you think the women just don't want to get their arm chopped off? I don't think it's out of thoughtfulness. Oh, is that what it is? I think so. Because I put my arm in there a million times, never been chopped. Well, I'm not saying your arms are going to be chopped. I think that's what they're thinking. Oh, I never thought about that. I don't think they're like, I don't want to bother anyone. I think they're like, oh my God, I'll die. I thought, because there's all these studies that say women aren't risk takers. So they're like, I'm not going to put my arm in there, but maybe you're right. Maybe it's a risk to get it chopped. You say women are or aren't risk takers? Are not. Yeah, exactly. They Uh, don't want to risk their arm chop. Interesting. But they wouldn't design a door that would cut an arm off. I know, but they're not thinking like that. I I think that's more likely they're afraid. Or they're afraid to get stuck, and then they have to run along the train and get hit. Oh, that would be funny. Yeah, classic comedy. Call in, ladies, because I would love to know why. Every I'm talking 100%. I've never seen a woman put the arm in. I've seen women put the stroller in, though. Yikes. I know. Well, that's a whole other bag of jizz. Absolutely. I love a bag of jizz. Sure. I keep uh, I keep a jar. (laughs) <laughs> I gotta get to bag. I guess it's more uh, malleable. Jizz jar. Boy, these monitors are tough. Look at that dick and pants. That ah, is crazy. That's not fun for the eyes. But yeah, <laughs> geez, you got a wingspan. Look at that thing. That's a full 
Full spread. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, that's headline news in the New York <laughs> Times. Full spread. Woo! Anyway, all right, give me some stuff, because, well, I mean, I haven't seen you since the 80s. You're at the Beacon. You're on TMZ. I mean, I don't even know who you are anymore. Well, we'll start with the Beak. Um, so we'll start with the Beak of the uh, chicken, but first off, we, we sell, we put on the Beacon. I'm uh-huh. going to start from the beginning. Please. We put the Beacon on sale. I, I always got my agents, what do you think about doing a show in New York City? And I go... I don't know. I blow my wad every night. I do four shows. I don't know if it's going to happen. They're like, what do you think about Carnegie Hall? I'm like, that's crazy. I could never do it. What do you think about Radio City? Ah, who am I? Matt Reif, get the hell out of here. What about the Beacon? It's something about the Beacon, Jerry. The it, Beacon's the coolest. It's the coolest. It, it, it buzzed. Right when he said that, I was like, ooh, that one feels good, you know, because it'd be nice to do the Garden Theater, the WAMU, whatever it's called, or Town Hall, or Gramercy, or these are all cool and great venues. But some of that beacon, it's got a, a jizz on it. It's got a je ne sais quoi. It does. Genocide quoi. Hey, uh, there you go. But that's the thing. It's in a neighborhood. It's on the Upper West Side. It's across from the Ansonia. We've walked underneath yes. it. The podcast started there. Yes. It's got the big marquee, Mark, yes. and the Funky Bunch. And it's it's a video marquee, and it's a beautiful old building. And for me, like I said, I've I've seen the Allman Brothers wow. there, and Jenny Lewis, and Jerry Seinfeld, and and uh, and Eddie Vedder, and wow. I've seen Jackson Brown, wow. and and all these great artists, and all this great stuff, and a bunch of other shows there. Allman Brothers several times. I think I mentioned that Tedeschi Trucks Band. Woo-wee. I mean, I've just been there a lot, and that's it's. It's one of the great theaters, and it's so neighborhoody. You can take the two train there, and you walk right up. Plus, Burr does it. Seinfeld ha- Gaffigan, fucking lives there. Jim Jeffries. All those guys, and it's so ornate and so yes. beautiful and, and wide and big. Radio City, as we've discussed, sucks. It's yeah. a cool accomplishment. I'm not taking anything from it. Sure. But the room itself is not great. Agreed. Too far, too big, too weird, and... Carnegie's obviously unbelievable, although I've heard the sound's not great. I think I'm repeating myself here. Not great. But um, I don't know. The Beacon is just so big and gorgeous. I agree. And it's a theater. Radio City, to me, is a, almost like a TV room. Like yes. Like you film things in there, and the Rockettes are on or whatever. It's like an event space. Yes. Where the Beacon is like, this is where we do rock music, comedy, rap, whatever the fuck. So, fuck it. All right, we'll try the Beacon. This is months and months ago, maybe even a year ago. Mm-hmm. And then it kind of, it's it's 20, 2,750 tickets. Okay. Roughly. And you're like, oh, it's a lot of tickets. Okay. And then, you know, you hey, a month went by, we sold 1,000. Oh, a month goes, hey, sold 1,500. Hey. But it never really got like, oh, I'm very confident about this. And my agent, they do all these numbers. They crunch, Jerry. So he goes, I bet we could sell another one. But you're going to have to push. You're going to have to devote your life to selling it out. And you're like, eh, I'm okay with one. It's hard. It's tricky because this is the thing about it. It's a weird business because you think tickets, a number of tickets. But it's also like it's human beings. Yes. you got to convince yes. human <laughs> yes. beings. You have to trick them. To not just want to see you, but to also be available. Yeah. It's like to sell 5,000 tickets, you got to have 12,000 people that want to go. Good point. Because half the people go, I can't afford that. Half or, the people go, I can't get a sitter. I gotta, I'm going to the movies that night. I got a wedding. I got a work thing. I got a osteoporosis, whatever it is. So you go, I don't know about that, whatever. So they, they, I can't say no to anything. So I go, all right, let's do it. And it's really not moving. Like the first mm. show isn't even sold out. And now we got like 200 sold for the second one. Okay. So clock's ticking. Then you get the Danny Punch up involved. Danny Frankel. Yeah. Hoop, hoop. Punch up. Live. Live. Dot com. Dot com. And he's all over it. He's like, you got to post a carousel. Now on Tuesday, post a video. Now on Thursday, post a still photo. And it's just, he's got the whole thing down. He's a guru. And you're like, all right. So a we're guru. doing. <laughs> we're doing that. We're doing this. We're do- it's a lot of work, but your whole life was just selling out that second show. How are we going to do it? So conference call, conference call. What are we going to do? And it's. But now we're about half sold on the second one. Okay. But that's uh, a lot of people. It's a lot of people and it's nothing to sneeze at. But if you don't get it up to 2,000, 2,200, it's you're gonna feel it in there. You're gonna feel it. But I do feel like once you get to fifteen hundred on the second show, 
you got a show. It's That's not, true. It's not embarrassing, but right. it's not great. Yes, yes, yes. So cut to it's three days before. All right, we got 700 tickets to sell. Okay, now you got 600. Hey, 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 this guy tweeted about it. All right, now you got 550, but it's still getting there. And that TMZ shit happened, sold it out. Wow. So it was just this wacky timing. It all came together. It was like a movie. We're like, uh, how are we going to pull it out? It was like a, like Rudy. Like, oh, well, no, he didn't pull it off. Rudy pulls it off. Did he win? Rudy? Yeah. Well, he gets a sack. He gets to play. They win. Oh, they win. Okay. Yeah, the team wins, but it's all about him. And he gets, it's, it's, from what I've heard, it's all about him. People hate him. Okay. But well, he gets a big sack. He got the sack. You sack up. You play your chips. They won the game. It's the same thing. It was like, how are we going to pull this off? Right at the end, something happens. You know when you're the, the watching the action movie, and uh-huh. you're like, oh, God, he was doing great, but now the big boss is beating him up. And then before you know it, the big boss is about to cut his head off, and then pff, he gets shot in the head. Right. That's what it felt like. The save, which was invented, they say, in High Noon. Is that right? Yeah, with uh, Gary, Gary Cooper. Cooper. Where, and people were really upset about it. John, bless you. Oh, Thank you. I, I thought you just got shot. John Wayne uh, was very upset because Gary Cooper, no one will help him, and he's scared, and his wife saves him. Ah. So John Wayne was like, what a <laughs> this movie sucks. <laughs> God, God. Sucks. You all right? Uh, yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. And supposedly that's the, the creation of the save. Ah. The other character comes in. You don't know who saved him, and boo, boo, boo. Started with High Noon. Well, there you go. Uh, all right. I'm high. But so you got the save. We got the save. Happened last minute. No one saw it coming. And you got you to gotta high five your agent because you go, I don't know how you did it, but you did it. I mean, he didn't do it. TMZ did it. But still, it got done. And, and Danny it, Frankel. And Danny Frankel. And it was his idea and blah, blah, blah. So Thursday, or Friday night's the first show. Stavros gave me great advice. I go, hey, you just did the beacon. Any tips? And he goes, yes. You go to you go to Salt Lake City. You f- get the Uber to the airport. You fly. You check into the hotel. You go to the green room of the show. You think about the show the whole day. The mm. whole Uber flight hotel is for this show. The Beacon. You take the subway. Right. You sleep in your own bed. So you're just. He said the, he did three at the Beacon. He said he showed up and he was like, "Oh shit, I'm at the Beacon." Because huh. you think of it as a New York spot. Right. And he's like, it took me two, like the first show was almost like a, oh shit, uh, what, what was that? What's going on? What's my act? And this, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying he fucked up. I'm just saying like he was out of it a little bit on the first mm. show. Then the second show, he's like, I knew what this was. I, I prepped all day. I thought about it all day, whatever. Interesting. Great advice. Good advice. So you, so you got a hotel. No. <laughs> but. I thought about it and I stewed on it, ah. and, and people said, "Hey, you wanna you wanna make out?" And I said, "No, no, I got the beacon tonight. I'm thinking about it." Ah, you know, it, it, and uh, so I, I had that going, so that helped. Wrote a bunch of shit, and then I also wrote a piece about the TMZ shit because ah. they're gonna want to hear it. A piece of material. Yes, a piece sounds like it's an article for the Atlantic. Oh yeah, I good wrote point. a piece. I wrote in words. <laughs> I wrote a chunk uh-huh. or uh, a bit. I see. So I wrote a bit about that. So I had to. I had that going. So I got and I listened to a set. Listened to an hour, uh-huh. and it went great. I got Soder opening. I wow. got Maddie Weiner opening. Wow. And Donnelly hosting. Wow. And then Santino was in town. The great Santini. <laughs> and I said, uh, "Hey, you want to do a set?" He went, Ooh, "Do I?" And he what? showed up. And so how was, much time does everyone do it? I, I I gave too much time away. I uh. think. But uh, super cool just to be in the bowels of that place. We had open bar. We had snacks. I got Salacuse on the ones and twos. I got Jason Katz rolling the footage. And yeah, your lady's there. Your agent's there. It, it just, it's just fun. That is uh, a special night. Now, I want to know more about this. So uh, you didn't, did you take the subway? Did you get a ride? What'd you do? I took the subway. Uh, they made me get there early because we, we sold posters. And they were uh-huh. like, get there early so you can sign all the posters. Gotcha. And then Katz is like, let me know when you're coming. I want to film it. He's like a dad. He's out there with the fucking camcorder on his shoulder. And you show up and he's like, hold on. He's walking backwards and he hits a kook. <laughs> and uh, we get the whole thing. And it's fun to walk through the beacon empty and be like, oh, this is going to fill up. Right. You know, and there's all these grips and stage hands walking around. The union. Yes, union, Jerry. And there's all these dumb union rules where 
I was like, can I get a cocktail? They're like, we're not actually allowed to pour you one back here, but we can go buy you one, put it in a sippy cup, you can bring it. And you're like, all right, what are we doing? Here? It's really wacky. People, I, I, that, that blew my mind. Starting to be at some of these shows in these places with the union, and they throw you out. They literally throw the artist out. It's wacky. They hate you. Yeah, you sell the whole place out, and they go, what's next? Move it along. Yeah, it's wonky. So what time are you getting there? So I got there at 6.30 for an 8 o'clock show. Wow. Not too crazy, but crazy. And uh, I always say the more time, it's like when we did Conan, the more time you're there, the more the anxiety starts right. to fester. So uh, you want it to go great, whatever. So the New York Times is there. Don Lemon showed up. What? Yeah, he's apparently a fan. Oh, my God. Who saw that coming? This black gay CNN reporter. Oh, my God. I think we've shit on him before. Oh, boy. <laughs> wow. Maybe not shit, but you know how the way we are. Yeah, I hope Lemon's not too sour. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, so coworkers of, from high school are hitting you up. Hey, I'm in town. This guy, Chris the Teacher, all these guys hey, that hey. forgot about for 30 years. Love Chris the Teacher. Good, good egg. And uh, yeah, so do it. Maddie goes up, or Donnelly goes up, does great. Maddie kills it. Then Soder killed it. And it's good vibes everywhere. Jeffrey Gurian shows up. He's he's trying to do interviews, and you're like, "Get out of here, you queef!" I love Gurian. He's a he's a comedy New York staple. You have to have him. He really is, and uh, he's a beautiful man. Beautiful hair, great smile, great oh, dentist. He brought a hot little uh, black chick with him. She must have been Ooh. 11 years old, and uh, we had a great time. <clears throat> so yeah, show is great. You go out there, you you. You get to do all the bits you worked on in the shit clubs, and you you know you get to you get to hear like a roar in that town. Yeah, you see them blossom, you see them bloom. Now, what's the last time you worked New York? What was the last real New York gig you did? I've only opened. I've never really done like a like we'll do the Gramercy or something, but never really did the town. Never did the headlining. Yeah, that's what's weird because Gotham and Carolines oh, yeah. are gone. Yeah, I used to headline Gotham, that's but that's where was we would work six years ago, five years ago. Yeah, that's really weird. That if you want to work, if you're a working headliner, there now is no room to do in New York, right? Well, Gotham's there. No, Gotham does showcases now. They don't do that anymore. They don't do weekends. They do weekend showcase shows. They stopped what? doing headliners a long time ago. Oh, I saw Sebastian there. I saw Joe Coy there. I saw all these big, like Schumer would do it. They stopped doing that. Geraldo, I that, saw. That's where uh, I opened for Jake Johansson. There. That's where Schumer gave me all that money when we opened for Bobby. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's Which was right. amazing. I'm still forever grateful. Yeah, yeah. But no, they stopped doing that a while ago because I think Gotham realized we can sell out We sell out any show. Oh, uh, So why give a headliner $15,000 yeah. or whatever when we can just have Tom, Dick, and Harry? Whoa, that's kind of a bummer because, I mean, they, they really – that felt like the stepping stone to like, oh, this guy's going to be big. Right. Well, it's nice for us because now we can do spots there if you're home on a weekend. And I believe they pay better than any club, I was just told. Oh, is that right? A friend of ours, a little uh, Dominican fella from Queens, told me that uh, he's like, yeah, yeah. I just they, He's like, I don't know why no one works there. He's like, you got to work there. Weekends, oh. they give like twice the amount of money and oh. it's packed. He's like, it's sold out every show. Always packed on the weekends and good crowd, smart, kind of up. They're like more upper crust. Yes. I think they're there. more local, too. Yes, yes. But Caroline's is gone, so there's no place to headline unless you're doing a big room, which I'll just tease. I'm doing a headlining and later on. I can't really talk about it yet. Which That's I'm exciting. worried about selling myself. It's the same thing. You're like, you got to get a lot of people. I know. You'll sell it. Bless you. Um, you. You'll sell it. I mean, you got you got a lot of runway, and you you don't work New York either. Headline. No, the only time I headline in New York is to shoot a special, which is on a Sunday night, typically at the VU. And oh, I pack yeah. it out. So that's right. We'll do a Saturday night in an undisclosed disclosed location in time. Well, I know the room, and it's a it's a beauty. It's a dandy. It's it's, lunch. A, it's a dabble, do you? Yeah, yeah. So this is. I mean, I I don't want to give too much away, but I opened for Louis there years ago, and I remember being like, oh. Oh my God! This was that was an honor to, to not only open for him, but like in that room. Come on! And it's a venue uh, that's t- is a Seinfeld episode, so that's fun. Yeah, well, I don't, I we'll talk after. Right, no, right, I don't right. want to give it all away. Give it away. Give it away. Give it away now. But yeah. it's exciting. <laughs> But all right, so, so yeah. Donnelly goes up, he kills. He does great. And you know, he he's hosts. A pro. He hosts. Yeah, and he was happy to do it. I was nervous to ask him because you know he's like he's the quintessential New York host, but he's like, I just want to do spots. Right. I'm good at hosting, but I'd like to be known as a comedian. He's, he's a great comic. Of course. So uh, he goes up, does, he's a pro, 
kills it. Maddie Wiener. And it's cool to see that these are headliners. They're doing 10. Right. So it's just, bam, top of the line, grade A, hard stuff. Nothing stepped on, no baby powder, pure Bolivian shale and killing. And then Soder goes up. He's a fucking monster. He destroys. One of the best ever. And then uh, Santino was a draw. He was a sequel. We got a little pop in, and he went out. He's famous. Of course. I mean, the place went apeshit. Huge. So he did 10, and he's got like a cool jacket on, and he's a fun guy. Handsome boy. Very handsome, good looking ginger. By the way, him and Soder backstage, I was just watching him. I was like, if I was a girl, I'd blow, blow both of them. Really? Well, they're both tall, and they're just so. I'm quick. tall. All right. Well, they're both handsome and they're quick and they're they're like, like a, it's almost like two battle rappers going at it with the with the zings and the jokes and the the the, the scenarios uh-huh. and the voices, and uh, you just you just watch it when you swoon. I suppose so. The voices are a little much for me, but what are you gonna do? <laughs> People like it. The Santino do the voices too. He does voice. He does characters. He's up and at him. He's doing scenarios and making. They're doing a whole. They're doing our town right there. Should I do voices? No, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nailed it, Wookie. Yeah, my uh, Wookie. I did it all for the Wookie. Come on, the Wookie. So. <laughs> Then you get to go out there, hot crowd, fun time. Here we are, and I open with the whole Seinfeld thing. I open for him. Did he come? Did you text him? He's what on happened? the road. He's on the road. Ah, He's geez. working. He, I, I thought for sure he was going to open. Uh, I was like, "What are you doing?" He's like, "I'm I'm a comedian. I'm working." I was like, "Yeah, yeah. that makes sense." Same. I also uh, Saturday was really embarrassing. I texted Che like, "Hey, you want to do a set?" And he was like, "I don't know if you're aware. I I do a show on Saturday night. I work Saturdays. I like, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm an idiot." Well, they do take fucking 48 weeks a year off. That's true. I mean, let's, let's be That's honest. True. Everyone talks about how hard it is to work at SNL. They're like, we're off for three weeks. We're off for six months. We don't work during the election. We don't work in November or good point. February. I heard Shane got hired. I haven't seen him on there yet. But uh, <laughs> well, so, good. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, great time. You wrap it up. You have a couple of pops. You live it up. Great. You go back, you just take the subway back home. The whole thing's very surreal. It's like doing Letterman. You just do it, and then they kick you out, and you're next to a bag of garbage uh, by a bodega. It's awkward. I mean, I remember I told the story many times. I opened for uh, Impractical Jokers at Radio yes, City, yes. and I left. I'm just on the D train, and it's just me. In a suit. It's just me sitting there, and I'm yeah. like, I just performed for 6,000 people. Nobody has any idea. No one has any idea. It's very, it's a Chappelle would say, it's Superman Clark Kent moment. What was that Natterman story? Remember him? He did Letterman. Oh, I don't James Smith told me this story. Natterman did Letterman. He's sitting on a curb out on West Third Street by the Boston. Mm-hmm. And James Smith goes, Oh my God, you're Dan Natterman. He just moved there from Australia. You just did Letterman. He goes, $1,100, and look where I am. And that, to me, that sums it all up. Oh, that's fun. You know, you go from biggest show on CBS. Yeah, sitting on a curb. Well, I did. I had the one where I opened for Louie at MSG, and I hadn't done a set for like four days for whatever reason. I was with my family or something. So I wanted to just get the dust off. So I was like, let me go do a spot. And this guy had a spot. Oh, what was the place? Right down the street from MSG. It had like horses on the sign. They used to do improv oh, downstairs. Yeah. Mustang. Saddle. Mustang Sally. Mustang Sally's. And um, I was like, I forget whose show it was, but I was like, can I just do time? I just want to get up. Yeah, and I was like down there bombing for eleven people, and I was like, at this time tomorrow, I'll be two blocks up at Madison Square Garden. It's the wackiest bit. I mean, we all know the LOL Bill Burr story. Hit me with it. Uh, Bill Burr was doing the garden, much like yourself, and he goes, "I want to get the rust off." So he goes, "What's a club?" Oh, I'm staying in Midtown. Somebody texts me. There's a club called LOL, which is notoriously like one of the worst rooms in the city. Absolutely. Takes the elevator up, and he goes. Hey, Charlie, I'd love to get some time. And they go, well, you have to get in line, buddy. You know, you can't just skip the line. We, we don't know who you are. And he's like, well, I am a established comedian. I'd like to just, can I just get like 10 minutes? I know you got a show here. It's Friday night. And he was like, whoa, you don't know how, welcome to New York, pal. This is not how it works here. You got to do open mics. You got to make clips. You got to get followers. And he was like, all right, I'm out of here. Wow. And all the comments were like, wait, no. You know. That doesn't sound like a Charlie. Oh, uh, yeah, good point. Uh, well, they, Charlie. These immigrants, they change their names. Um, but any farts. Story. So it's all wonky and wacky, so you take the subway back. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I uh, I made the cardinal mistake, which I don't know what that means. Cardinal, cardinal rule. I think it's big, like a big yeah, rule. Red. 
bird. There's cardinal beak in theater. Uh, yeah. Well, there's cardinal directions. That's like northeast, southwest, oh, right? I didn't know that. I think they're called cardinal. Then there's a cardinal who's like a religious guy. He's a cardinal. Yeah. And there's the St. Louis Cardinals. Right, right. So cardinal must mean something. Uh, yeah, it's one of those things I've just taken. I don't know what it means. I'm just like, ah, the cardinal rule, the cardinal sin. Maybe it's like admiral. Uh, cardinal admiral. Maybe. Because admiral's big. Call in. So uh, cardinal mistake of drinking too much. So now I wake up. I'm hungover, and I'm like, oh, I got another show tonight. I should have prepped. I should have had my head in the game. What am I doing? So you spend the whole day killing the hangover, Pedialyte, doing some push-ups, trying to sweat it out, whatever. Saturday, I got to say, by about 5 o'clock, I'm feeling better. Get to the club. To the, to, club. Uh, to get to the, the theater. Bring the wife. Jason Katz out there like a dad. Hey, all right, let me take that again. Can you walk? Walk up again. Come out of the subway. Okay, yeah. here we go. Slow it down, slow it down. I'm walking backwards, that whole thing. You do that. We get there. We sign some more posters. Got the lady there. She's dressed to the nine. Salakus <laughs> shows up. And now your you're, your feet are wet. Of course. Now you know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. You know the ropes. You know the alleys, the whole thing. And this was the crowd that bought tickets quick. Right. This know? is the first show. First show. This ain't, you know, this ain't no TMZ shit. This is fans who want to come or, or audience or comedy lovers, whatever you want to call it. Now, that's something I Gaze. learned from touring with Louie. The first show to sell is the best show. 100%. So, uh, now, mind you, I've asked 900 people to be on this show, but everybody, it's a weekend. Everybody's working. Yeah. I asked you, Sam, Vitor, Roy Wood, Ronnie Chang. Ronnie Chang is at Radio City that night. Is that right? Yeah, so we both sold out. That's how many people are living in this fucking city who love comedy. Wow. And Asians. Holy. Yeah, so, uh, so yeah. So I go, hey, you know who's my oldest pal in comedy? First guy I ever met in comedy was Gary Veter. Second guy, Matt Ruby. Matt Ruby's the first guy I met in New York. Really? Yeah. There you go. Oh, so me, Soder, and Ruby was like a gang. Isn't wow, that funny? Wow, that's crazy. That is wild. So I text Ruby. He's like, oh, what I? He gets his best uh, Indiana Jones hat and a bolo tie. Three-piece suit. Yeah. So he shows up. And I go, hey, what about the hand man? Hand man? The hand man's killing it all over Instagram. Oh, I said hand. Hand. Han. Han. Yes. Solo. So he's uh, he's he's like, yeah, I'll do it. I text him a Teo. He's like, I would, but I, he showed me his, his schedule. It's like... 8.05, 8.10, 8.15, 8.19. He's at the cellar every room. Now, he's done that beacon. Oh, has he? I believe so. Yeah. I think he must have. I think he did it fucking 11 times. It's Chicago theater. He, he's huge. Massive. Killer. Funny guy. Talented guy. Handsome and ripped. Yeah, what can he do? He like he, he sings. Vagina. He paints. I But I bet he could fuck. Probably. He's got the, the abs, the core strength. Yeah, if you can fuck a man, you can fuck a woman. I guess that's true. Yeah, it's not. But maybe you can't get it up. Ah, you can take a pill. That's true. Blue chew. Lord knows I do. So uh, he's uh, he couldn't do it. But yeah, I called everybody. So these are the last guys who were available. And uh, no, I'm just kidding. And then, you know, I thought, who is the host at the cellar you see where you go, thank God he's hosting? Mm. It's not a rambly, goes too long, doesn't do jokes, all crowd work. Who's the guy you go, he's hosting? I'm gonna I'm gonna do all right. Mike Yard. He was busy. Uh, let me think of another one. James it, Mattern. Also booked, but think a little out of the pocket. Out of the pocket. John Laster. Also working. Um, I haven't been in the cellar in a long time. I mean, he's old school. John Fish. You got it. Wow. I said, Go let me, Fish. I mean, John Fish. Talk about old friends. I've known John Fish for 24 years. What? He was the guy in Boston. It got me my first work at the comedy, uh, whatever it was called, Comedy Blossom or China Blossom. There you go. Wow. Fisheroo. Great guy. and Pride and of Boston. Killer act, and no one's talking about him. Uh, he's one of the best ever. I mean, I mean that guy blew when I was a young boy. And it's funny to look back; he was like three years in. But I was like, <laughs> "Holy shit!" Because when I started, he had just done new faces, and he fucking he was the talk of the town up there. Same. I always loved his stuff. His album is really great. I wish I could remember the name of it. It was something about sushi. I can't remember. Uh, I can't remember either. Google John Fish with a with a C in there. He's the reason I moved to Astoria. I was like, "That's where John Fish lives. That's where I'll go." There you go. 
So uh, he hosted, brought up, he killed, brought up, and he does a lot of New York stuff. Oh, yeah. Which is great for the Beacon, because you got all the Long Island, the Jersey, the Manhattanites, the Brooklynites, the Queensanites, the Westchesterites, the Bronxanites. They go, oh, yeah, we know this. Right. This is hometown shit. Days and nights. And then uh, Samsonite. <laughs> and then Ruby went up, killed. Picked the right material, really just nailed it, had a big ending, the whole thing. And then Phil Hanley went up, and you know, Hanley's a fucking gay gunslinger. Just zinger, zinger, zinger. One of the best. Gunzinger. Now, I, I always think about guys like Hanley and Big J, who are the best crowd work comics oh, incredible. ever. And incredible. now everything's crowd work. It's got to be like, great. Here we go. My bread and butter. I mean, Hanley's been doing this for a long time, and he's the king. He's the king, and I checked his Instagram. His last video's got like 15 million views. And you're like, well, there you go. He's cooking now. He's huge. I remember one point him asking me advice. I mean, when you're asking me Instagram advice, things are not going great. <laughs> and now he's like tripled me up. I forget about it. Shooting star and a handsome son of a bee. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you know, Good dresser. Huh? Good dresser. Ah, he, used to, he used to be. He used to be. I think we shit on him too much. Now he wears like Grateful Dead tank tops. Yeah, he was wearing uh, pants that looked like a train conductor. They're mm. big and pinstripe. But uh, killed it. The wife was swooning. Yada, yada. And then I, I I went up, and it was one of those, you know when the first line hits, you're like, oh, it's going to be a good hour. Mm -hmm. The first show was like, this is good. We're yeah. doing it. The, this one was like, oh, fuck. Magic. Right. And then when they're better, you're better. And it was just a hot one. And then uh, they, they told me the guy from the New York Times was in the crowd. So that thank God for that on that show, not the first show. Did a QA and a at the end. Uh, really, uh, really had a good time. Then we went to the after party. J.P. Buck was there. Remember wow. Him? Of course I do. Yeah, he's a good egg. And uh, just uh, fun. Met the lady who books the beacon who was like, thank you. And you're like, what? this is so weird. That's you know, crazy. I should be eating you out. But uh, she was nice. Hope she didn't hear that. And then, yeah, then, you know, took home the wife, had a nice plow. <laughs> and uh, they called me Mr. Plow. And that's that. I picture them giving you a big check, like a six foot check, <laughs> three feet, and they, with a big signature on it. And you, you tuck it underneath and you yeah. head home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that is, that is some kind of weekend. Crazy weekend. And you just. You, it went well. It went great. It could have. It went as good as it could have gone. Unless you guys were all there, that would have been nice. Yeah. But we're all working. But I'm glad it's over. Absolutely, of course. As 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 uh, fun as it was and as magical as it was, I'm just glad it's done and I can put that behind me and it's all downhill from here. It's weird because then you have to like you're like okay now I can just go back to the stand and the cellar and do spots and feel normal. But then like. It comes all back around again. Then you're know. like, now I got to do the beacon with all different stuff. How am I yeah. going to do that? And then this, next time you'll do four. But isn't that kind of the point of life? Is just kind of taking a breather. Then all right, let's do the thing again. Like you have a special ramping up. You know that feeling. And you're like, all right, then we got to record it, sell the tickets. Then we got to edit it, and then we got to put it out. And then you got to promote it. Right. And it's just so many steps. But then, then it's like, all right, it's, we're done. The water is calm now. Right. And it's then all a year later. It's all ups and downs. It goes and comes back around. And uh, what, a, what an exciting job we have. I know. That it's so fun and as stressful as it is and frustrating as it can be, it's like, okay, now i got to create more stuff by doing my favorite thing. Exactly. And um, it is really something. We talked on the phone a little bit on Sunday. Yes. But it's, uh, it's hard to even, like, connect to to it. It feels so I funky. Know, and I was I saying know. to you, it's like the metaphor I came up with is like, you don't notice yourself aging. Yes. Because you look in the mirror every day. It's hard to, because the thing has been so slow, we've been with each other every day, all of us. It's so wild to be like, you did two at the Beacon Theater? Yeah, it's bananas. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make, you know what did it for me was hanging out with Sam Marill, and he was showing me his Raya account back when he was single. I don't know what that is. That's like the top notch, you got to be recommended, you got to be hot, you got to be rich oh, right. dating app. Oh, right. You got to be somebody. It's almost like a verified. I remember Soder was on that. Soder's a hot guy. But he was showing me the women, I'm like... Uh, maybe bleep that. But he was showing me the women. I'm like, what? These right. are the women? He's also a 6'3 hunk of Jew face. But right. I'm just saying, like, I was like, oh, we're in a different world now. This right. is crazy. Yeah, it's a strange thing. And I, like I was saying to you, it's like you're selling more tickets than, like, all almost all of our favorite comedians ever did. 
That's wacky. That's crazy to think about. Like, Geraldo was not doing, rest in peace, all their due respect, was not doing two beacons. Oy. It should have been. It's crazy. Of, of course. I mean, now it's such a different animal. Back then, I'm like, I don't know how you could sell big tickets. I know. It's, it's a weird thing. You had to get on The Daily Show, The Tonight Show, Comedy Central Presents. You had to get on a roast of some guy. It was a different world. It's uh, it's crazy to think about, but uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm beyond proud of you, but it's like, it's confusing. It doesn't, you're like, I saw that, you sent me that photo, and I'm like, this is bananas. It's it, like that Salacuse grabbed. It doesn't compute. It's um, it's really uh, something special. I said to you too. I'm like, I gotta like sit in a room and like meditate on this because it's <laughs> it's all wacky. And then you just adapt to things. You're yeah. like, oh yeah, you had dinner with Seinfeld, and then you right. and you just your brain just kind of like, okay, you have dinner with Seinfeld, and uh, it's so true. You I had that with you and Louis. Like, yeah, you're out with Louis, the biggest comic on the planet, the best comic working. You're out with him. Yeah. You know him. You got. You're like, oh, Louis's calling. This is annoying. You know, like that's crazy. Well, not annoying, but you well, know, we're busy. You know, we're doing something. You're busy. You're but, busy. But yeah, I just. I'm like, I texted him today. I'm like, ah, a couple people are coming over Sunday. If you want to come by, and it's like, it's wonky, and um, and then the money and all the stuff. It's just, it's just really um, crazy, and it shows if you just keep doing something every day, and you're passionate about it. And uh, it's great. It's like the great Conan quote, J.P. Buck, where he said uh, on his last Tonight Show, nobody gets exactly what they want in their in life, but if you work really hard and you're kind, amazing things will happen. Ooh, it's uh, it's kind of like that. It's like it's it's crazy. And now we're into like this territory that, and I know people say like beyond my wildest dreams. I'm like I literally didn't dream about this stuff. I know. Partly because you know we hate ourselves and all that. But um, we dreamt just doing clubs and not having a day job. It's great. I mean, I remember like featuring for DePaulo and being like, man, if I could do the funny bone, yes, the Omaha yes. funny bone, wouldn't totally. that be something? And I'm still grateful to do that room. And I don't really sell that market, frankly. But um, <laughs> but it is it's just uh, it's unbelievable. And uh, yeah, you just one day at a time, head down, keep doing it. And all of a sudden you look and it's like they, they say, like, the only thing worth comparing yourself to the only person worth comparing yourself to is your younger self yes and you're like you look at you just did two sold out shows of the beacon and then you just think about i think about meeting you at barcelona bar i know i know and uh and like going up you're like open for me at motley's yes yes it's just uh it's just unbelievable so it's all wackadoo uh well we got about eight minutes or eight seconds so i'll, I'll tell the other other story real quick oh yeah please i'll i'll condense uh basically a friend of mine, she's working for some company, and she goes, this company likes comedy. They want to go viral. Uh, will you do a show? Something crazy will happen. You riff on it, and uh, they'll they'll use it to go viral. And I was like, ah, it's not really my thing. And she was like, come on, please. It would really help me. I'm trying to get in with this company. They don't know any comedians. I know you. This is like a good bridge. Okay. And I was like, well, what's the show? She was like, just do a couple. And I was like, if you let me headline and sell out a show, I'll do it. Because then I get to I'll go on before the beacon. I get a, a set in. Yeah. So she's like, all right, great. So I'll figure all that out. So we they sold out New York Comedy Club. So I get to do 45. So I called Donnelly again. I go, you want to host? He's hosting. So I was like, oh, great. I get an hour set in in the city. Make a little dough. Make a little dough. Make a little love. Get down tonight. But she was like, something crazy is going to happen. And I was like, all right, so I'll probably get heckled. I'll riff on it. And then maybe I'll get a clip out of that. Okay. So I was like, oh, yeah, I'll do it. I show up. It's crazy production, grips, catering, jibs, lighting rigs. I was like, oh, this is, they could have shot this on an iPhone. But whatever. I get to do a half an hour, 45 minutes. So I go up. Donnelly kills. Good crowd. I'm riffing. I'm working on new. I got a I got a hot show in the city, and uh, then they won't tell me what the thing is gonna be. So like something crazy is gonna happen. So I just assumed I'll probably get heckled or right. t- told I suck or something. So I go, all right. They won't tell me what it is because they want me to be natural. So I was like, okay. So then I'm You're doing a natural it. guy. Yeah, you know me. Not robotic. Not autistic. Guy walks on stage, and I was so into the set. I was like, oh, what's going on here? I thought he was like trying to get past me to get out to the bathroom or something. And then I realized, oh, this must be the thing. So I start trying to riff on him. And I'm like, hey, what are you? Um, are we running out of place to put migrants? Jew tunnel? Some joke. And then a girl walks on stage. 
And no one's really doing anything. People in the crowd are like, what the hell's happening? What's going on? So the crowd is a regular crowd. Regular crowd. And then they go to me, the security guard is right here, and he goes, come on, come on. So then the crowd's like, oh, no, these guys must be dangerous. This must be some kind of thing because they're taking the comedian off. And a lady was filming it on her phone in the front row, and that's what made it go viral. All the other shit was a big waste. They spent all this money on giant 10K cameras and grips and, and maintenance guys and all this shit. It went viral because a woman filmed it, and all you see is me being pulled off stage with a guy on stage. Right. So the internet just went ape shit and spun it and did what they do, where they make incredibly false statements with pure confidence. Right, yeah. I mean, there was crazy stuff. I mean, because you say, oh, someone got tased. So there was all these oh, like things about someone I... got tased. There you go. Which is hilarious. And then people were like, cops ran through. But you're like, there's no cops. No cops. No cops at all. And I also was taken by the fact, because everyone was messaging me. I got literally the most calls I've ever gotten in my life. Jesus. I mean, like... Family members, comics, people from high school, celebrity comedians. It wow. was crazy. And everyone's like, is he okay? And I, I mean, maybe I'm crazy. I'm watching the video. I'm like, he doesn't look particularly nervous. No. You're literally smiling. And and I said to people, I'm like, if this had been a serious thing that was really like someone just ran on stage, the natural thing would be either to defend yourself or create distance. Yes, yes. Like no one is just going like, ah. Look at this. Yeah. I, I mean, like, if somebody came on stage, I would be like, let me just go ahead and sure. move out of the way. And um, so I was getting frustrated because it's like, people, is he dying? Is he okay? I was there it. a bomb? Did he get shot? And I'm watching being like, he looks pretty healthy to me. It was fine. But the unknown kicks in. Everybody's right. curiosity sparks up. And then you, you, you remember the Chappelle thing, the Chris Rock thing. So you're right. like, is it one of those? And then no one will tell them. So I feel for the, the the public. They're just like, what is it? Then TMZ picks it up. They're calling me like crazy. Page six, all these other things. And if you go on YouTube and put my name in, it's just the whole feed is just like, was he abducted? Was it an alien? Was it a terrorism? Was it whatever? So it was all a big fat nothing. But the thing that bugged me was I just got off stage and ran to another show. Yeah. I was like, all right, thank you. We did it. Good. All right, I'm going to run out. They did like a they evacuated the audience. So then it makes it look like it's a legit scary thing. Well, is that were those people from the production company? Because I, I haven't been to New York Comedy Club in a minute. Do those people work there? Who? The people that came on at the end and said, okay, we need you to leave. Oh, they were part of the production. That's what I thought, because I'm like, I don't recognize these people. No, no, no. Well, and that lady seemed actually scared. The lady that gets on the microphone. I don't think she was, but no, I don't think she was either. But I'm saying, like, she at least did a thing right. where she was like, ah, yeah. So all's well that ends well. No one got hurt. It was all a big ruse to get traffic to Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Uh huh. Uh, which well, I it guess worked. worked. Yeah. I mean, my God, it was. I mean, that's the biggest thing anyone's ever been a part of. That was bigger than fucking uh, Watergate. I'm talking comics, us. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was bigger than... Uh, well, the Chris Rock slap, I think, is bigger. News I'm than talking you, me, Sam, oh, Kramer, yeah, yeah, the butler. Yeah. I mean, that was bigger than certainly, uh, you know, whatever. Sure, sure, yeah. I mean, TMZ wasn't like new Sam Arill special. No, they never do. It'd be nice. Wouldn't be bad. Poke, yeah. poke fun at that or, or poke fun. Blow that up. I mean, that was NBC News, CBS, Daily Mail. You were in um, like the Daily Mirror or some crazy. I mean, it was wild. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's the unknown. I had people, a celebrity guy, I don't want, won't say his name, but he DM'd me and he's like, just tell me what it is. I'll leave you alone. Like, you don't have to, we don't have to chit chat. Just tell me what happened. I'm just dying to know. Yeah, I think uh, the mystery, but yeah, I mean, people were really, the rumor mills were really cooking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't know what it was going to be, and uh, I just played played ball and got the hell out of there. I just wanted to do a set, but uh, it became a whole to do. Well, and it worked out. It worked out. But, you know, I don't also don't want to be like the Andy Kaufman guy. Is he going to go up and do a thing now? You know? Right. So that part sucks. But they set the whole thing up. I don't know. But I guess it worked. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we got to wrap this fucking thing up. But uh, what a weekend. Insane week. It's crazy that you did two at the Beacon, and it wasn't even close to being the biggest, most talked about thing you did. <laughs> How weird is that? Yeah. That's, that's a weird three days. That's showbiz. Uh, that is. I mean... I guess 
the New York Times was at the Beacon. That helps. That helps. Hopefully that did they write it up? I hope. I he, he's. I think he's in the process. Hopefully oh, okay. He, he's gentle because those guys can be harsh. But uh, Zinnemann. Yeah, and I said a lot of fucked up shit uh, as a as you do as a comedian. Of course. But then Sunday I went and did West Side and bombed. Which ah, is fun. Right Which next is, door. Just a block away, yeah. Literally, I mean, across the street. Literally. And it was eight people, and they were like, who are you? What are you talking about? And I was like, ah, I was attacked. Ah, that's it's TMZ. Um, all right, we got to wrap this up. Um, go. Oh, my God, that's uh, an expensive I camera. Should have thrown out that one. Um, go get tickets to the show. First of all, I started... I don't know how to say it other than Patreon, but it's not Patreon. On Punch Up Live. There you go. A little subscription-based... Bonus, and it's kind of like Mindful Metal Jacket, but it's just me on the uh, row with uh, Andy Hendrickson, Matt Way, whoever I'm with. There's uh, Luke Monas, and it's us just bullshitting. So extra content. It's five bucks a month. If you want to join, I'm doing some solo ones, too. No pressure. People get upset when you fucking promote I know. stuff. They get very mad. I'm Do like, it or don't. They don't have to. But uh, there's some really good stuff. I've had some great conversations, some funny stuff. It's a lot of me and Matt Wayne talking music, talking mental health, making fun of people. Get on there if you want. Big Mindful Metal Jacket guest coming up and uh, some really great episodes. This is one with Isabel Hagen, so check it out. Get in there. She's fun. And May Planet, the (laughs) second, May 2nd, Regent Theater, Los Angeles. Please buy those tickets for God's sakes. we got a few months to sell it. um, Wait, you're there the second? Yeah. I'm there the third. I know. I thought you're there the second too. I thought you're going to Nate's and then coming by or whatever. Yeah, I'll come by, but I I thought you couldn't do a live pod. They told me the fifth. Oh, you're only available the fifth. Oh, weird. that was that was. You weren't available till Monday. It was what I was. Well, told. I That's think people said the store wants us to do it. The comedy store, and they they gave us the fifth. The only thing they offered was May second at midnight, and uh. the next thing they said was the fifth. But I was told it was your availability. Wow. That's what I was told. Okay, but I, I will do the. I'll do the fourth. May the fourth be with you. Yes. The but fourth I mean, is the Saturday. I mean, I, I would do the fourth too, but we gotta find do a it, venue. Do it like five or something. The f- Oh, maybe they said Monday. It might have been the sixth they offered. Ooh, that's far out. Yeah, I was like, I can't just be in LA for a week. I yeah, have a child. Child. Well, we'll figure it out. Uh, but yeah, I couldn't. I don't want to do midnight the night because midnight is three a.m. I go to bed oh, at ten p.m. Oh yeah, good point. I'm like, I, this is gonna be crazy. But anyways, we'll figure that out. Uh, May second, Regent Theater. Go to Punch Up Live. Sign up for the email list. All my tickets are on there. Punchuplive.com. Joe slash list or whatever. And uh, there's something else I want to fucking plug. I can't remember. Columbia, Missouri, um, all the stuff. Buffalo. I'm going everywhere. So please uh, get yourself a ticket. Come on out. Watch the special. Blah, blah, blah. Hey, hey, yes, yes. Uh, Bunch of dates. MarkNomanComedy.com. Go to Punch Up as well. I put a story on my Instagram every week with the link. Coming to your town, Austin, San Antonio, Houston, uh, Tucson, Phoenix, Charlotte. Charlottesville, Charleston, all the other ones that sound the same. And, uh, yeah, check out our specials. Get on the Patreon. It's cooking. Oh, Oh, big stuff on the Patreon coming. We did a Grove 34. Our bio Lex, Chuck was away, but Lex filmed everything. going to be three, I think four bonuses. Jesus. From that. I mean, it was great. We had a full diner hang with yes. Salak Siobhan came in. We got a backstage hang. We got us riffing on stage. Yep. We got a whole bunch of stuff. Us walking work. around Astoria. Yes, yes. It was really something. I just got hit with a shit. Isn't that the craziest oh, feeling? Oh, well, there's a decent shitter here. It just came on. Just right there. Um, so now is a great time to sign up for the Patreon. We always say it, but... People love the video stuff. They love hot gay sets. This is us. We're going to do another one. There's going to be a lot of hot gay sets coming up. (laughs) So uh, get on that. And then the other bonuses have just been us doing another 30 minutes of podcast, which a lot of people love. So uh, get on there. If you want 30 minutes extra podcast a week, you want the podcast early a week, you want it ad free a week, you want videos of us on stage, backstage, only place you can find it is on the Patreon. You got it, baby. We'll see you all in hell. Praise Allah. Queep it up. Thank you. Yeah.